England, Japan. Well, uh, poof. I'm going to start off with the positives of this game. Uh, first positive was the referee. I think he stayed out of the game. And it's always nice when you kind of get into 60 minutes in a game and you think, hey, I've, I've not really had any complaints about what the referee's done until this point. I think the best thing about a referee, unless there's like a, a television match official intervention or something that's really obvious, the best thing to say about a referee is that he wasn't involved in the game, judged it very well, was consistent and great. And I think that's a real solid performance by him. I think Japan's defence and overall organisation was really good. Uh, I think we're seeing some improvement from them throughout this World Cup. They look better, they look better and better in each game. And some of their attacking work that they can do, they've got a, a nifty winger, they've got some guys that like to play with the ball a little bit, throw it around, so there's some positives to take for Japan from that as well. I don't think the end scoreline really reflected the full story of the game. I think they were much more in it than the final score suggests. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for positives for me. Uh, moving on to the negatives, wow. What a regression from England from last week. I already said that Argentina, uh, the game against Argentina, that the media was already going mental about that and overhyping England, what they were doing. But not only did they play worse and they looked less organised and they didn't know what they were doing in an attack, in addition to that, their kicking game had changed back and reverted to what they were doing back in the warm up games, which makes me, as an England fan, very, 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 very nervous. We stopped kicking for territory as much. We were back to the up and under game when we have one person that can really compete in up and unders, which still makes no sense to me why we are so reliant on that as a form of trying to gain possession in the opposition half. It makes much more sense for me if we're going to kick to kick for territory uh, with a bunch of line out jumpers that uh, can compete with anybody just because they are, we've got Chesham, Laws, uh, Itoje all in there that can be launched up in the air and compete for a lot of ball. And with good defensive organisation and line out, you can compete against most people. It makes no sense to me why we have three forwards that can compete in a line out and one back that can compete under a high ball. Uh, we're really, really intent on just doing up and unders that don't go very far when we could be kicking for territory further down the pitch and actually competing for some ball, which makes a little bit more sense. Attacking wise, it makes me a bit concerned that Joe Marchant is getting his second carry 65 minutes into the game. Makes no sense to me whatsoever. You may say that you have a game plan, but for me, uh, if you're not trying to run with the ball against Japan, which, let's be honest, is not the same tier as you are in terms of quality of players and the pool that you have to select the players, then it's kind of embarrassing. You want to be attacking with a little bit more uh, impetus, a little bit more direction. And to see a player like Marchant or Tulangi for that matter, or some of the wingers, uh, to play and not have them uh, show some of their skills that they have in terms of ball carrying ability is a real shame. The only thing that stopped me really kind of just laying into England completely is I think in the last 10 or 15 minutes there was uh, something to take from it. Uh, obviously a bonus point win for England is good. I felt like they probably brought it back together in terms of having some attacking impetus and knowing what they're doing. Uh, George Ford was bossing uh, the attack a lot better, uh, especially with that final try. Uh, his quick decision making over something that was probably a bit of a messed up move from a scrum and going for the crossfield kick over to Freddie was quite nice to see. Although I would argue that any other defensive line that isn't Japan would probably completely have smashed George before he had the chance to get the kickoff because he wasn't deep enough. But yeah, that last 15 minutes gives a little bit of hope of showing what attacking rugby England can do. More direct running from the forwards better lines, better decision-making. Um, I'm also hoping that the heat had something to do with some of the poor attacking play. Over and over again, it, sent, it seemed like there was a handling error in a really key part of the field, which stopped England's attack right in its tracks and gave a scrum away and basically stopped the attack dead. And I think going into halftime with a score as they was, and as close as it was, I felt like J Japan deserved to be there. And there was a sinking feeling inside of me thinking, this is more the England that I've seen in the warm-up games. All this talk about, you know, well, warm-up games are warm-up games didn't really make sense when England are playing exactly the same way as they were before. And again, I think just the way this, the pools are set up, England are going to be 
set up to probably make a quarter final and that's probably when their neck's going to be really tested so again they still have more time to figure this out but I don't think the performance was good enough and I don't think any of the players would probably think it was good enough either yes you got the, some positive vibes out of the last 10-15 minutes but man the game, the, the, the kicking plan in the Argentina game was just so much better. And I'm not talking about drop goals, I'm talking about kicking for territory and competing at line out and set pieces. This up and under game that just gives the ball the opposition and gave Japan confidence to attack back and almost score tries a couple of times and take the lead, it's not working and it just needs to be dissolved. It just needs to go like. It, it's just not a successful way to run this team and it's a shame because there's a lot of potential in the squad some good players that play very well for their clubs uh, and yeah I feel like they're being sucked into running a game plan that's not necessarily reading what's in front of them uh, I wouldn't have a problem if I saw a one up and under within the first 15 minutes maybe two or three but if you do it three four five times and it no longer works someone has to make that register within their own head and make a decision to change the style of play. So England got away with it. They got away with a bonus point win. And yeah, I guess the next real test looking from an England perspective is probably when they play Samoa on the 7th of October. So that's when things ramp up for them. So not positive. You got away with it, but there's still time. So the hope... It's the hope that gets you, I guess. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But that's that's all my thoughts on the game. I'm going to go through some notes as well, just to make sure I haven't missed anything off. I think Japan's inventiveness was pretty cool to see. Uh, it's the first time I've seen a grubber kick off a kickoff, which maybe is you know maybe a, a new thing that could be utilised by other teams. Maybe someone could copy, copy, copycat that and make it effective. Especially with uh, everyone so practiced in lifting people up to catch a high ball under under uh, under kickoff, uh, having a grubber in there. If you can just see that everyone's in situated pods and not paying attention, that could be a real interesting change up to the game that we might see other teams take up. I thought that was very inventive and cool. A theory that I have that I don't know is true or not, uh, but that is something I would like to speculate is that Johnny May did take out a man, which was kind of dumb. Uh, who was a kicker and I just wonder if maybe that was just uh, fraught out frustration with uh, with the game plan and not having the ball in hand and maybe maybe feeling like he just just he was like a second late on being able to make the tackle and so he just wanted to get involved in the game I can't think with the current game plan that England were utilizing this in this Japan game that a lot of them are feeling like that it's working and maybe they have a frustration with it as well I thought Japan's defence looked solid for most of the game. I said at 55 minutes that maybe Marcus Smith needs to come on. I felt like maybe we just needed a decent distributor and ball carrier to come on. Not that George Ford isn't that, but he certainly wasn't finding a rhythm right up until like the last 15 minutes of the game. Uh, Marcus Smith did come on and I did feel like he added a bit of impetus into the attack, was much more willing to keep the ball in hand, uh, get over the game line. And I think that did make a difference in the last 10 or 15 minutes. And probably was some part in reasoning why they got that bonus point win. The <laughs> the bounce off of Joe Marler's head was such a let off the hook for England in terms of the first try to uh, kind of break the seal of points, as it were. It was very, very England that, that it required that to, um, to actually go ahead and feel a little bit of pressure off so they could be a bit more free in their attack. That was actually off a Will Stewart handling error, who made, he also made a couple of really key handling errors in areas of the game where, you know, you're closing in for a try and he knocks the ball on. It wasn't the first time he did it. Sorry, that was the first time he did it, but he did it multiple times. And I think that's quite impressive for, for someone who's actually a substitute coming onto the pitch. And yeah, that's it. I think the last, the last note I made was just that the, uh, Freddie Stewart try by George Ford was was quite impressive. I, I think it would be remiss if I didn't say that myself. So there is time, there is time to improve, but it feels like a real regression from the Argentinian game last week uh, from an England fan perspective. Uh, and if you're Japan, 
probably got your game of the tournament coming up next against Samoa, which I, I'm actually really excited to watch. Uh, that should be a really nice contest. Um, and yeah, that's it really for me for this game. Illuminati can